What's going on everyone? In this video, we are going to learn and build step-by-step -step the core fundamentals of web development. This video is best watched on a laptop or computer where you can type into a text editor. If you don't have a text editor, you can download one for free called VS Code developed by Microsoft. Check the description for a link to download VS Code. Pause this video now if you need to download a text editor. Okay, once you have the VS Code app downloaded, we can begin the tutorial. Throughout this video, I'm going to be comparing building a website to building a home to help you visualize how websites are created. Similar to building a home, a website needs land to build upon. On the internet, the browser is the land we build websites on. There are many different browsers to choose from. If you're on a Mac, you might be using Safari or Chrome. If you're on Windows, you might have Edge or Internet Explorer. Today, I'm going to be using Chrome, but any browsers will work for this tutorial. Now we're going to open up VS Code and create a file and save it to our desktop. To open up VS Code on a Mac, you can click the spotlight search on the top right corner of the screen and type in code. Under top hits, you should see Visual Studio Code. Press enter or double click to open the application. Once VS Code is open, we're going to create a new file by choosing File, New File. Then we're going to save the file by going to File, Save. We're going to rename the file to index.html. The index represents the main page of the website, and the HTML file extension represents the code we are going to write in. Like a home, a website needs a foundation to build on. HTML, our hypertext markup language, is our foundation. Instead of using frames like in a house, we use tags that look like this section to create a part of our page. There are many choices on how to build a home, such as brick, stones, wood, or even a combo. Similarly, there are many tags to use and they each have a defined purpose. If we are choosing to make a front door, we wouldn't use brick because that's heavy and not practical. Similarly, if we wanted to create a button for our website, we would want to use the defined button tag and not a section tag. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. If you wanna zoom in yourself, you can do Command plus. Okay, so in our index HTML file, we are going to write a section tag with a nested button tag. For each tag, start with a less than sign, write our tag, then end with a more than sign. So here we go. We have a less than sign, we write our tag, and then we have our more than sign. This is our starting tag, okay? And if we want to close this tag, we're gonna write our end tag. We're gonna write, again, our less than sign, our forward slash, write the name of the tag, and then our more than sign. An important thing to note when writing HTML is the starting and the ending tag. Think of these like the ceiling and floor. It would be the ceiling, this would be the floor. If you don't add them, then our frame won't work. Notice on the end tag, the forward slash. This is because we want to close the tag. If you don't close tags, you may see unexpected results. Now let's write our button tag inside the section tag. We would call this a nested tag. Move your cursor to the end of our section start tag and press enter. Like before, we're gonna write out a starting tag first with a less than sign, write our tag name and end with a more than sign. We're gonna do the same for the end tag, except we're gonna add the forward slash. Now, inside the button tag that we created, we're gonna move our cursor and write the words, click, click me. And then we're gonna go up to file and save. Now, if we open up our folder that we created on the desktop and double click our file, you should see the button that we created. After we get our frames up, we can begin to paint the walls. On the internet, the way we add colors to our site is using CSS, our cascading style sheet. Let's say we wanted to style our button to be a green color. We could use a style tag and select our button using this syntax. Button, background color, green. This is our style tag. We're selecting our button and we're adding this rule called background color green. Now our button is green. There are other ways we could style our button using CSS properties like border, font, size, width, and height. 
Now let's add the style tag to make our button green. If we go back to our index.html file and add the style tag, and inside the style tag, we can add that CSS rule that we were talking about. This button background color green. We're gonna write it in. So we're gonna select our button up here, and we're gonna use these curly braces, and we can press enter. Notice how there's also a starting and ending curly brace. Then we're gonna add the CSS rule, background, color, group. And then we're gonna file, save it again. We're gonna go back to our browser that we had before and we're gonna refresh it. And look, our button is green. Like I said before, there are other CSS properties such as color for font color. Let's say we wanted to change it to white. Now if we refresh, now we can see the button a little bit better. If you are not seeing the correct results, it may be because you forgot to save, it may be because you didn't refresh, or it could be that you wrote the CSS rule incorrectly. One thing to notice again is the curly braces, you need a starting and ending one, you need to correctly spell button, and you need to correctly separate what we call the property name from the property value. The property name in this case would be background color. It has a colon and then the property value green and it ends with a semicolon. Same thing for color. This is the property name followed by colon. This is the property value white followed by a semicolon. Okay, once you are able to see the correct button with a background color green and the font color of white, You'll notice that when we click the button, it highlights, but it doesn't really do anything. Usually when you click a button, some type of action occurs. So in this case, we're gonna add a function that when we click this, we're gonna get a message. In the house, when we click the doorbell, we expect there to be a sound to notify our friends we have arrived. If we wanted to welcome our guests or our users when they click a button on our website, we need to write a function. To add a functionality to the site, we write in JS or JavaScript inside a script tag. This is the code that we are going to write. Essentially, we are going to select the button, select the button that we created, and on click, when they click it, run this function, and we're going to alert our guests, welcome our guests. Okay, let's go into our text editor and add it to our code. Here we are in the text editor again. We're gonna write our script tag. You'll often notice that there's an autocomplete, so if you click this, it can complete it um, if you have autocomplete on. Um, I don't have it on because I wanna show you guys how to correctly write tags without autocomplete because it's important to know. Okay, so we have our script tag. Remember how we write them, the starting tag and the ending tag. Okay, so now we're gonna write our JavaScript. So we're gonna do document, query, selector. This is how we select our button. We're gonna write in our button. We're gonna say on click equals function. All right, parentheses, and then open this up. And inside here is where we're gonna alert. Write an alert. An alert basically pops open a message and we're gonna say, welcome guests. Awesome. Remember to file save or command S. And then we're gonna go back into our browsers and then we're gonna run it. Okay, so now when we click this, woo, it says welcome guests. Awesome. All right, moving on, we're gonna try to add this website to the internet so we can share it with our friends.
Last but not least, if we want to invite our neighbors to a party, we need to send out an email invitation. If we wanted to share our website, we need to create a URL to access it on the internet. Here, we are going to use Netlify, a web application that allows you to publish a site for free. Using their Netlify drop feature, I'm going to drag what we built into the upload button and create, and Netlify will create a URL that we could share with our friends. So if we go to this URL, we copy it. I'm going to have this in the description. Go to our tab and we paste it. Now you may need to log in. Um, in this case, I'm already logged in. Um, it's, it should be a pretty simple process of logging in. Um, you just probably have to use your email just like anything else. And we're gonna drag that folder that we created with our website and look at that. See now, this is our website URL. And when we click this, now if we sent this to one of our friends, they can click our button and we can welcome them to our website. Pretty cool, right? So in review, building a website is much like building a home. We have these three different uh, languages that we use. We have HTML, hypertext markup language. This is our bricks and our foundation. These are the tags that we create that basically create our frames for our website. We have CSS cascading style sheet. This is how we paint and add aesthetics to our uh, website like we did with the green button. And then JavaScript, JS, we create functionalities in the house. So like we said, like a doorbell or an oven, but in this case, we made a button that when you click it, it welcomes people to our site. Thanks for watching everyone. Um, on the next video, we are going to learn about the separation of concerns and how to split up these three different languages so that you can build a website in a proper organized way. See you in the next video. Thanks.